Welcome to this lesson on defining UI requirements for your Power BI reporting solutions. We are almost at the end of the first stage of the requirements gathering. We already talked about how to determine business goals and pain points, how to identify your audience or your user personas or report types. And now we are finally going to talk about one of the last things for the requirements gathering, which is UI requirements. I really, really, really believe that this is extremely important when you're designing your report. And it's not just about the design of your report, it's about providing the best user experience and adding that data storytelling element that, believe me, you can't have any other way. If you don't understand the requirements for that report, if you don't understand how people are going to use that report, what kind of people are using that report or what kind of personas. So without knowing all of this, you will never be able to add that storytelling element to your reports that everyone talks about these days. It's not just about, like I said, putting some cute colors and icons on a canvas. It's not about that. Data storytelling is a lot more than that. And icons and cute colors and nice designs are not data storytelling and, and it might not be an effective reporting solution. Having that, what things should we consider when defining UI requirements? Well, there are three key things. First, you need to understand what is the form factor or input method. And what it, I mean by this is you need to understand what kind of devices will be used to visualize your report because as you know, building a report for the web is very different from building a report for an iPad or for a mobile device. So you need to understand what kind of device is going to be used to visualize your report so that you can adapt the way you are designing your reports to that device. For example, if you know that the report is going to be mainly used or consumed on like a normal browser, then I would probably not take a lot of time trying to really come up with an amazing solution for mobile devices. If the report is not going to be used on mobile, then probably there is no point on taking a lot of time trying to improve the design for mobile, right? On the other hand, if the report is going to be used a lot in mobile devices, then you need to think about how are you going to optimize this report so that it is mobile friendly. Things like the interactions, things like tooltips, how do you do a tooltip on a mobile, for example, or apply to mobile devices. So it does influence a lot the way you're going to build and design your report. Second, you need to know what is the style and theme for your report. When you're designing your reports, you need to have the company's branding identity in mind. You need to use the branding colors, you need to use the branding style, you need to use something that, again, translates that branding identity throughout your report. I'm not saying that you need to follow like marketing branding guidelines to the T, of course not, but there are a few things like using the right color scheme, logos and industry related and industry related images, sorry, that will improve the UI of your report by a lot. If you're asking yourself, how do I get the, that branding identity from a company into my reports, then worry not, we are going to talk about that in a lot more detail in the lessons ahead. And finally, accessibility. Accessibility is a topic that is not frequently discussed, I think. Even I fell on this trap sometimes. I think the main question that you need to ask your stakeholders is if you need to worry about accessibility, like any detail information about the users that are going to use your report or so that we make sure that you make it accessible to those users. And I think that in theory, you should always worry about accessibility, but, and I'm going to be controversial, pro controversial probably. I think that in practice, there are a few key things that you should worry about in terms of, of accessibility, but anything beyond that point of, yeah, you should evaluate if you need to introduce more accessibility features into your reporting solutions or not. I think some of the key things that you should always worry about in terms of accessibility is, for example, using a clear and simple layout with headings, subheadings in a way that makes the report easy to scan and easy to read. Also avoiding jargon or, or using jargon or technical terms whenever possible. Provide a clear navigation for different sections of the report so it makes it easier to work with with that report and probably a few other things that I'm forgetting or not mentioning. There are a few aspects though 
that I think are very specific for the cases when you actually do have users that can find your report not very accessible because they have some kind of impairment. And in these cases, I am 100% in. You should definitely check with these users and ask them, what can I do to make the report more accessible to you? If they need to use that report for their day for their day to day tasks at work, you need to understand how to make the report accessible for them. Some of the things that I've seen being used that help these users uh, are using high contrast colors for text and background to make it easy to read for people with visual impairments, for example, making sure that the report can be read and understood using a screen reader and that all the elements of the report are clearly labeled but mostly i think you can definitely just use some kind of assistive technology tool to ensure that your report is fully accessible for all users i will leave a link in the description of the video if you want to check one of the free online tools that you can use to test accessibility in your report. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it and test it yourself, that is a link in the description. So please go and check it. To finalize or to summarize this lesson, defining UI requirements is defining how your report is going to be consumed and the appearance or the general appearance of that report. These are the questions that you should be asking your stakeholders during the requirements gathering sessions. The first one is what's the branding of your company like? And more specifically, ask for marketing branding guidelines or if the branding guidelines don't exist, ask for the company logos, ask for the color palette of that company, of the branding of that company, ask for images and icons that are characteristic to that company or, or that industry things that would fit in the industry and the purpose of that report, basically. If we are talking about a big company, then you will probably or most pro probably find all of this online anyway. So if there aren't any marketing or branding guidelines and the company is big enough, you can find all of this online. So that is always a workaround. The second question is which device is going to be the preferred method of consumption? Is it mobile? Is it web? Is it an iPad? Try to understand this and find the answer to this question too. And the last question you should think about is accessibility. Is accessibility a key factor in this report? And if so, can the stakeholders explain what is important uh, and why in terms of accessibility? And I want to kind of talk about accessibility again because I think that in the end it is our fault. Yes, it is our fault that accessibility is not a topic that is very often talked about. So I want to talk about it more now. Unfortunately, accessibility, mobile layouts and other things are the kind of thing that usually is left behind in the process of developing your report. It's one of those things that you leave until the end, right? If you have time, maybe you will build it like a layout that is more mobile friendly, or maybe you will check how accessible your reports is and maybe do some accessibility improvements on it and you will leave that to the end though i know that in reality the truth is that probably you will not have time for all of this all the time in all your reports so even though i think these are very very important aspects of the report development process i do understand that sometimes they do get le left a little bit behind and sometimes it's not the fault of the developer so don't feel bad about that and with this we finished this lesson on ui requirements which was a short one i hope you found it this lesson useful and i'll see you in the next one